In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the most common questions we get asked about in Colorado, and that is, is it possible to install air conditioning in a home that's never had AC before? Now, the short answer is yes, absolutely. It is 100% possible to install air conditioning in a home that has never had it. And in this video, we're going to give you a few options that discuss how that's done. And we will also be putting out another video later separately that explains installation options for homes that don't even have ductwork. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already so that you can get a notification when that video comes out. And this is actually a very common scenario that we run into in Colorado in homes that have boilers but have never had air conditioning at all. So if you've never had air conditioning in your home and you finally decided to add it, you're going to fall into one of two categories. Now, number one in the first category is that you have a forced air furnace and therefore have ductwork in your home. And the second category is going to be for homes without ductwork. Now, this video is going to be focused on the design and installation considerations for retro installation of air conditioning into homes that have existing ductwork. And as I mentioned earlier, I will touch on some of the additional options for homes without ductwork in this video. But in addition, we will have a separate video coming out shortly specifically dedicated to that topic. So the way that air conditioning works is you basically have two components. Air conditioning is based on a relatively simple principle called thermodynamics, which means heat transfer by state change. Now, in order for your air conditioner to work, you need an outdoor unit, which is called your condenser and an indoor unit, which is called your evaporator coil. And these two components are connected by a series of copper tubes called a line set. Now your line set is composed of a liquid line and a suction or vapor line. And in case you couldn't tell by the titles, that's right, liquid refrigerant flows through the liquid line and vapor refrigerant flows through the suction or vapor line. And for what it's worth, I've never heard anyone call it a vapor line. Most techs will call it a suction line and liquid line. But the bottom line is that these two lines are what connect the outdoor unit to the indoor unit and allow heat transfer to take place. Now you might not have even known that you had to have an indoor coil that had to be attached to an outdoor unit because most people think of their air conditioner as just a box that sits outside. But the evaporator coil that sits on top of your furnace or air handler is what actually removes the heat from your home and makes sure that you are nice and cool and comfortable. And the reason I point this out is because this is one of the main design considerations that we have to look at when we're retrofitting a system that has never had air conditioning before. Oftentimes the mechanical room does not border an exterior wall and so we have to figure out how do get the copper line set from the condenser outside to wherever the furnace or air handler is in the mechanical room. And this is typically one of the more difficult aspects of installation in homes that have never had air conditioning, especially when the basements are finished. And what I mean by finished is that you have walls and flooring up, for example, meaning that it's not a wide open empty basement that we could run a line set through easily. Now, if you are in a state like California or Arizona, depending on where you are located in this country, this might not sound familiar to you because certain regions don't have basements. And in this instance, your furnace or air conditioner is probably in an attic or a closet somewhere. The bottom line is that we have to figure out how to get a coil on top of your furnace and how to connect it to the outdoor unit. Now, one of the additional differences between a heating only furnace system and one with air conditioning is the low voltage wiring. The low voltage wiring I am referring to is the 24 volt circuit that connects the control board on your furnace in a heat only system. You technically only need two wires ran from the thermostat to your furnace for it to work properly. This is because you only need a wire for your R terminal and your W terminal. However, in an air conditioning system, you may need a minimum of five wires. Technically, you can get away with four, but a five wire system is going to give you a common wire in addition to a Y wire for your AC and a G wire for your fan terminal. Having a five wire low voltage wire ran to your thermostat is going to give you maximum compatibility with thermostats as well as thermostat setting functionality. But if you happen to be in a sticky situation where you don't have the ability to run a new wire, there there are a few options that I will discuss briefly. One is what's called a power extender or a fast stat for short. These add wires via a relay that is installed inside the furnace cabinet that allows you to use an existing two wire system and convert it into a five wire thermostat. The downside with these is that they are not very efficient and oftentimes glitchy. They are, however, an option and we do use them from time to time. Just know they typically do not work well with high power draw thermostats or Wi-Fi thermostats like a Nest, for example, but it is an okay option for 
a basic battery powered thermostat if you are in a pinch. The other option is a wireless thermostat. Now, I don't like these as much because connectivity issues can mean your AC is working intermittently. Typically, they're pretty reliable and we have used these in instances where we had no other option. So I do like to point that out that that is something that's available. And if you're enjoying this content so far, please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and let me know what you think in the comment section below. Did you find this content helpful so far? Is it what you were looking for? Or were you looking to have some different questions answered? Like I said, we put out daily and weekly content and do take your comments into consideration when creating content. And if you're in a position where you don't have ductwork in your home, like I said, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we will have a video dropping shortly talking specifically about installing air conditioning in homes without ductwork. So now that we've discussed your low voltage wiring, your line set, and your indoor and outdoor unit, let's talk about the rest of the installation considerations. The next consideration, which is somewhat minor, but can potentially turn into a major issue is if you need a new panel, and that is your electrical circuit. Your condenser outside will require a 240 volt circuit, which means that you need space for a two pole breaker. Typically, if you send a picture of your electrical panel to an electrician, they can tell you whether or not you will need to upgrade your service in order to add air conditioning, as long as they know what breaker size your air conditioner will require. Like I said, typically this is not a deal breaker and most panels have space to add one or two circuits. However, if you happen to have a panel like a Federal Pacific or a Zinsco panel, for example, which are known fire hazards, sometimes electricians won't touch them, meaning you'll have to replace the panel in order to add an electrical circuit. Like I mentioned, sending a quick picture of your electrical panel to your electrician can normally determine if you have space to add a circuit. And the second part of the equation you want to consider when it comes to adding an electrical circuit for your condenser is the location of the panel and length of the run. An electrician will know what wire size gauge you need to use, but just keep in mind that longer runs will require larger gauge wiring and therefore cost more money to install and take more labor and have a much higher parts cost because not only is the run longer, but it's also a thicker wire and copper wire tends to get disproportionately more expensive as the gauge of the wire increases. That being said, if your ideal location for the condenser is on the other side of the house, I would advise you to not go cheap and just bite the bullet, even if the longer electrical run is going to cost a little bit more money. And the main reason is that if this is going to keep the condenser out of sight and on the side of the house that you don't use, this is going to be worth it in the long run, especially if you use your patio in the summer and the alternative is smacking it right next to your patio table or barbecue, for example. And the last consideration I want to talk about briefly, because it deserves a video entirely in and of itself, and that is sizing the equipment properly and getting a heat load calculation on your home. Equipment sizing varies drastically by region, and this is especially true when comparing a state like Colorado to another metro like Phoenix, Arizona, for example. And there's a few reasons why, but one that's very obvious is that Phoenix is much hotter than Denver, for example. And in addition, Denver is at a higher altitude, which means that even though the airflow capacity of your ductwork in Phoenix might support a three-ton system just fine, if you're headed up to Evergreen, Colorado, for example, at 8,000 feet elevation, you will be moving about 25% less airflow compared to what you would at sea level. And this is why when you're talking to local contractors, make sure that they're familiar with the area so that your system is sized accordingly. And that's how you install a traditional split air conditioning system into a home that's never had air conditioning before, but has existing ductwork. But what if you don't have existing ductwork? Is it hard to add ductwork? As I mentioned earlier, there'll be a video coming out shortly. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so so that you catch that video when it comes out. Because the short answer is yes, you can oftentimes either number one, add duct work, or number two, utilize a ductless system as an option. And depending on the region you are in, our recommendation will vary, but a local contractor in your area will be able to make suggestions based on what is common practice in your location. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service, like Denver Metro or Colorado Springs, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's a link actually in the description below where you can schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. So we hope you found this content helpful and informative and let us know what you think in the comment section below. I'm always curious to see what brings people to our channel and what projects people are working on. And as promised earlier, there's a video popping up on the screen right now. So watch that if you haven't already, and we will catch you on the next episode.